All right. All right. Everybody get yourself comfortable. Okay. So I posted the practice exam online. The practice exam I posted online this morning. You can find it under the announcements. Uh, I think it's a pretty fair representation. I've got to actually finish writing the actual exam. Uh, but today I think we're going to um, have a bit of fun. So why don't we play a game of Mad Libs and we'll go through a game first just to just in case you did not ever play uh, Mad Libs as a kid, let's go ahead and go through a game. So all right, first I need a plural noun. Any takers? Zebras. Zebras, I'll take zebras. All right, place? Honolulu. Honolulu. Uh, Honolulu. Okay, noun. Chickens. Chicken. So just a singular. All right. Z plural noun. Sorry? Cowboys. All right. Another noun. Coffee. Coffee. Adjective. Foreign. Foreign. Okay. Verb. Coding. All right. Numbers. Or number. Eight. Adjective. Yellow. Any other thing? Anything? Any other? Sorry? Adjective, people. Angry. There we go. Okay. Body part. Foot. Foot. Verb. Sorry? Eat. All right, so let's go ahead and click it and see what happens. Two zebras, both alike in dignity, in fair Honolulu we lay our scene. In ancient chicken break to new mutiny, where civil blood makes civil hands unclean. For, um, forth the fatal loins of these two boys, a pair of star-crossed cowboys take their life, who old misadventured piteous overthrows do with their coffee bury their parents' strife. <laughs> so... The fearful passage of foreign love and the countenance of their parents' rage, which but but their children's end, not good coding, is now the eight hours traffic of our stage, in which you shall eat with angry foot attend, in which, in which you will with angry foot attend what here shall he eat our toil do strive to mend. So a mad lib for those of you who haven't uh, who who haven't got the gist of it yet is um, made by. A company and they're essentially at uh, they are an ad lib word game. Essentially, they are a fill in the blank game. All right, um, you take something and I got it from and this is from part eight of our uh, chapter eight over here. Um, the idea here is that we take some string of text like this. The adjective panda walked into the noun then verb. A nearby vet noun was unaffected by these events, right? And we replace and we let people. And we just say, I need an adjective, a noun, a verb, another noun, right? We say those things, and we let the user enter them, and then we hand them back to the user, OK? So we read a file, and then we uh, hand it back to the user. Uh, but we, we basically, they don't know what the full story is, right? We just ask them to replace words in it, and then we hand it back, right? So remember. Over is yeah, like right over here when we were going through it, um, like over here, it just tells us here are the words you need, and then we will, and then it will, you know, I'll put it, then it will let you put in the, um, and then it will put in your entries into the story, right? Of course, there's nothing stopping me from putting in the wrong stuff like that. It had murky blank link pancreases. Great. So anyway, uh, our goal today is that we want to write a program that does Mad Libs. Uh, specifically, what we're going to do is that we are going to um, we are going to read in a text file and let the user enter their own text anywhere. We see adjective, noun, adverb, or verb. Right. We're, we can expand it later. With other things, but right now we're just going to do. At, we're just going to expect adjective, noun, adverb, and verb. Yes. 
you know, I could have like really used that earlier. <laughs> okay, laptop, there we go. All right, so here we're just going to work on this assignment from the book, which is create a Mad Libs program. We're going to read in a text file, and we are going to uh, basically swap, we're going to swap out the of these words out for um, user entries. Um, there's a couple, there's a number of different approaches to do this, you know, um, and I'm going to just go through at least one of them. Um, but the idea is that the program would enter like this, enter an adjective, a noun, a verb, and then a noun, and then it would create a new text file. So it should, the new result should be printed to the screen and saved to a text file, okay? So, what we will do is that we will, um, so let's go ahead and start by creating a couple of, um, of files for us to read. So, let's call, so what I'm going to show, and I'm also might as well integrate this and show you how to use folders as well. So, first I'll put it in the folder that I want, my typical coding folder, a folder, and I'm going to create a um, new folder over here called uh, Mad Libs. Okay, and then I'm going to put uh, one dot txt in there. I'm going to call this one dot txt. Okay, um, another one. I so let's go ahead and create a second one, just so that we have two. Because you know it'd be pretty boring if our Madlib program could only do one Madlib ever, right? It would get old very quickly. So. Um, so let's go ahead and see about creating one. Um, let's go ahead and grab Bram Stoker's Dracula, okay? Uh, because, you know, humor and horror are very, very strongly related. For one, they both start with H. So, you know. Uh, so again, where am I going to get the text for Dracula, the full text, if it's out of copyright? Yeah, Project Gutenberg. So here, it's book 335 on there. It was So I'm going to go ahead and grab it, and I'm going to look for maybe something uh, interesting. Uh, let's see. Insect. Um, no. Let's see. Scurry. I'm just trying to remember a specifically a specific words. Uh, so I'm going to just grab a paragraph, essentially. Uh, so we'll go ahead and grab a paragraph. Let's go ahead and grab a steak. Let's see. So let's go ahead and actually, yeah, why not? Let's see. So Dracula, we'll grab this, uh, 2.txt, and I'll go ahead again, put this into, um, create a new file, put it into classroom, ITP for me, Mad Libs. So you want to put that Madlib folder essentially wherever you're going to your Python file is going to be for this. Uh, 2.txt. And now we got to put stuff in there. So and so let's go ahead and remove words from it. Uh, when you shall be verb verb. Verb noun adjective right and you can grab whatever you want from these I'm just simply grabbing I'm just making this a file so that we have something to work with drive a uh, noun 
verb a noun through me and cut off my noun. Or do whatever. There we go. So there we've created a Mad Lib just like that. All you have to do is just simply take a word that looks interesting and remove it and replace it with the part of with with uh, the appropriate grammatical type it is. All right, so we've got those. So now let's go ahead and write a program that will actually do the Mad Libs for us. All right, so I've created these two files, right? Um, and honestly, you can just work, if you need something easy, you can just simply say, a, you know, like the fox jumped, you know, like the fox jumped over the lazy dog and then just simply replace a fox jumped uh, with noun and verb, you know, those kind of things. It's fairly straightforward to do. All right, so let's go ahead and write a Mad Lib program now, which I've never actually done, full disclosure, so this will be interesting. But I think I know how to pretty much uh, do it. Mad Libs. Actually, I might have done it once, but madlib.py. Let's see, did I end up doing it once over here? My lib. Nope, have not. OK. So what we need to do is essentially is that the only part of the file, first thing we need to do is read the file. OK? So let's go ahead and do that. Now, we're not like reading it line by line. It's pretty much just, you know, effectively already a bunch of lines. So we'll just read the file in as a string. OK, uh, so let's go ahead and open 1.txt. For right now, we'll just work on 1.txt. Now, normally we'd do 1.txt is uh, with R like that. So um, with file, OK. Normally we do that, except that lib uh, 1.txt is in a folder. So what we have to do is we have to say what folder it's in. So we'll go mad libs, because I put it in a folder called mad libs, mad libs slash 1.txt. Okay, now let's go ahead and double check to make sure it works. For line in lib file print line. Right, again, the first thing we'd like to do is to run it and make sure it works. An adjective panda walked into the noun and then verb, a nearby noun, was unaffected by these events. Again, why does it have that extra space in there? Because it has the new line in there, so I can just simply strip that out. And there we go. So there's a number of ways we can do this. Uh, we can use regular expressions, and we can also not use regular expressions but uh, to do the whole replacement thing. But um, the first thing, so one way we can do it, one thing we don't want to do, though, is say, like, replace all or, or use the sub function, right? We don't, because that would replace all instances of one thing with another thing. But we can't still use regular expressions because regular expressions, the search function will return the very first one. So, um, so there's a number of ways to do this. Let's go ahead and actually take a look, though, at our regular expression function because we know that does give us a way to substitute. So uh, regex sub python. Ah, so we could use regex.sub by throwing in an additional argument over here. Um, so if we did um, re.sub, then we can pass it, right, what we want to, all occurrence of pattern to be replaced by that. If it's, and so let's see. So we can replace, um, yeah, so pattern may be a pattern object. So we can also do that and say, give it a count. 
which says that, uh, let's see, count. The maximum number of pa pattern occurrences to be replaced, a non-negative integer. So that seems like it's very useful for like for one of the for using a regular expression to do this, because regular expressions go through uh, files and find stuff for us like that. Okay. Um, so let's go ahead and use a regular expression basically to see how we can do this. So. Um, re dot compile yes ah yes I have to import re import re so we've got our file um, do, do, do. re dot compile and let's go ahead and create a basic regular expression r is a noun adjective verb adverb So this will match noun, adjective, verb, or adverb pretty easily. Um, and we'll see if we can just do it for one right now, because if we can do it with just one, then awesome. Um, so let's go ahead and call this a mad regex. Right. So again, so if you haven't guessed, this is kind of just trying to throw everything together and show how we can use some tools, some really powerful tools in a very simple manner to make our uh, Thing easier. So line is equal to line dot strip because I just like doing that. And let's see what we can do. We can do mad regex dot sub. Um, let's see. We can do sub. Well, actually, let's just go ahead and do um, match is equal to. Noun. Sorry, re. Sorry, mad regex. Dot. Group, uh, dot search. Line. So we'll search the line to see if it can find anything in there, and if it did find something there, if match. Print. Match. Dot. Group or match dot string or let's actually go with uh, match a string group group that probably won't do that also it would help if I actually sp spelled print as print not pring run it and we get the adjective panda walked into the noun and then verb. A nearby noun was <gasps> adjective. So it was able to do it just fine. Um, let's see, if I put it in a group like this, maybe it will find it. So adjective panda walked into the noun, then verb. A nearby noun was. So print. What about match.group? Will just be ah, there we go. Adjective. So it find it found the very first thing in that string, which is adjective. Oh, okay. A nearby noun an adjective panda walked to the noun and then verb. A nearby noun was adjective. Because number one says a nearby noun was unaffected by these events. So now I change it to this noun, and will now I was wondering why it wasn't doing two lines, and it was because there was no Mad Lib on the second. There was nothing on the second line to. So what this does is that saying here's the first line: the adjective panda walked to the noun, then verb. A nearby noun was adjective, right? So it identifies that the first thing in there is an adjective. That's what search does. It finds the very first thing that matches that regular expression. Okay. Right? This finds the first thing that matches that regular expression in the line. Make sense? Yes? Is there a way to change the tense of the word? The what? The tense? Like, so the verbs have to be past tense in that case. Is there a way to make that 
Um, we, we, we will add, um, I, we, yes, but we got to add functionality to it. It's by specifying, it's by adding more options over here as to what can be replaced. And by doing it like this, we will help, m our regex will get ginormous, but uh, it will slowly get big. And it helps me uh, keep the amount of, um, the amount of options we have to do um, that much. Uh, lower. But basically what we can say is, is that um, if there's a match, right, if this line has some uh, has a blank for my Mad Lib, then what I can do is say, hey, if match, I can then go to go and say print, uh, please enter a um, plus match dot group I can say that All right please enter a match dot group and now I can say please enter an adjective and then it tells me to please enter a noun right so here's what I'm doing I'm stripping that for each line I strip the line I look for the first thing in it right obviously the first thing is not everything but we'll we'll burn that bridge when we get there okay so it says we get to an adjective, and then, uh, and so it prints out, hey, please enter an adjective, because they need to. So now that lets us, hey, get back into the whole input thing that we used to do. Uh, so let's go with word is equal to input, right? Word is equal to input, please enter a, um, yep, yeah. so let's run it in now, please enter an adjective. Adjective. Please enter a noun. A noun, right? I know I'm a smart, I'm a smart out here. Um, but the point being is that it asked for me to enter something, and I could enter something then, right? So now that I save it, I can actually. The question is, how do I get it back in there? Well, our first reaction might be to do um, re dot. Uh, dot substitute, or sorry, dot sub, not re dot sub, but uh, sorry, mad regex dot sub. And a sub, right, that would take in what I'd like to replace it with, which is word, and the target needs to be, and then we have the target, which is line, right? Um, and output is e so and then we can say that is output is equal to and this will change by the way greatly output is equal to that and then print output right so this is the way a lot of programming works is which is creating something incrementally and trying to use a tool and then seeing it wor it work or if it fail to work um, let's go with a uh, flower flowery. The flowery panda walked to the flowery and then the flowery. A nearby flowery was, please enter a noun. Explosion. This a nearby flower was unexpected by this explosion. Okay? So what happened there? It subs, remember, mad re regex dot sub replaces all instances of of um of the regular expression in line with word right so we just replaced all the nouns we pre we just replaced every possible blank on that regex with the same thing but hey at least we're replacing stuff now so that's a step in the right direction right okay can i get it to replace just the first thing and the answer is yes if i use if I add another argument over here, one, um, let's go with pretty. The pretty panda walked into the noun, then verb. A nearby noun was blank. Okay. So that found the first one. And I, what that does, this last argument over here is normally zero, which says there's a limit. And zero meaning no limit. 
But once you put it over here, once you put a number in over there, like one, two, three, or four, that's the maximum number of things it will replace. For instance, if I do two and uh, and wet, the wet panda walked to the wet, then verb noun, right? It replaced two things there. Now the reason why that's important, and I'm still is because the regular expression matches noun, adjective, verb, or adverb, and I just want to keep using one regular expression to make it easy to extend in the future. Okay, so if I replace one at a time, then that will be pretty easy to do. Okay. Please enter an adjective. Um, lonely. The lonely panda walked, right? Okay. Now, okay, but how do I, but that only got one thing in the line. How do I get everything else in the line? So, and the key over here is by doing the following. Well, we found our first thing by doing a search. And we found the first thing in there, doing a search. So, if I keep searching, if I instead keep searching like this, if I say met, so we create our output, is equal to this, and then we keep searching, except I need to change it to line over here, right? So replace output with line over there. We update our old line by replacing, by substituting exactly one instance of it, then ask, is there anything else in here? And switch this if into a while. Oh, now we're in business, because we'll search for something. If there is a match, guess what? We'll ask to do We'll ask them to find what we met, uh, to enter the instance of what we matched, grab it, that input, replace that, uh, replace the input with, uh, sorry, replace that, uh, replace that, um, you know, noun, adjective, verb, or adverb with a, with that word, and then check to see if there's any more to do. Okay, so enter an adjective. Flowery, enter a noun, frog, uh, enter a verb, um, um, let's go with trip, enter a noun, mumps. The flowery panda walked, into the, walked to the frog and then tripped. A nearby mumps was, please enter a noun. was um, event, unaffected by this event, right? So it did the first line and then it printed it out. Okay, is everybody getting how this works? It's pretty short, actually, to just print it out. Um, let's go ahead and create a new variable called output over here. Right, output is equal to an empty string, and all we're going to do is that when we're done with the line, rather than printing it out, what we'll do is we'll say output is equal to output concatenated with the line plus a slash n, right, because we need to add that new line in there. And then we will, because we stripped out that new line, so we can add it in there. Suppose we can get away by not stripping it, but that is fine. Slash n. All right, output is equal to output plus line, and then uh, once we're done, print output. Enter an ad adjective. Flowery. Um, amusement park, enter a verb, smashed, cradle, canteen. The flowery panda walked into the amusement park and then smashed. A nearby cradle was unaffected by this canteen. 
Not the funniest, but hey, you know, it's working now. That's pretty cool. Okay. Now, the other thing that it wanted us to do was output this into a file once we're done. Okay. So, um, let's go ahead and do out file is equal to open um, just call it out let's call it out.txt and we're writing a new file so we'll need to give it what write access right so we're writing a new file and what we're going to do is that we're going to write to it every time we create a new line so we'll do uh, so we'll say out file dot write uh, line plus the slash n that we needed. And that's all we need to do to write a file. Literally, just instead of printing it out, we would we just you know write it to that file that we created, and then we can do. Um, Let's see. Oh, and then at the end, to make sure that, that it, go, it actually goes, we do out file dot close. Okay. Enter an adjective a, 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 right, just for the sake of it. And then we can open up and see that we've created a new file called out.txt with 77 bytes. And our same output's right over here. So again, writing files are pretty easy. Any questions on that? So now I have multiple Madlib files over here, which is great, but I have it hard coded that I'm using one. So what I'm going to need Python to do is figure out all the uh, what all the files are in there and basically choose one at random. So let's figure out how to do that. Um, by the way, uh, that was chap that was pretty much chapter uh, that was most of chapter eight, by the way. So let's go ahead and just uh, talk about um, just a few things about uh, files and stuff. right? Seven was our um, so six was dictionaries. Seven was um, was regular expressions. And now we're going to talk about uh, file paths. So if you're using Windows, um, let's just talk about this a bit more because I want to make sure I, you understand the, what you're working with. We'll go over both the way it works in Windows and the way it works on a Unix system like, uh, like Mac or Linux. I happen to be using Linux, so, it will be very, so if you're using a Mac, it's going to be very similar over here. If you're using Windows, it's fairly straightforward. Um, so on Windows, uh, your hard disks are split up into drives. They can be virtual or they can be real. Uh, they start with C drive. Everything, the primary things by default are in C drive. This is because the old A and B used to be floppy disk readers, right? And so, and because Windows needs to be backwards compatible with just about everything in Windows, C it is. Um, most of your stuff is stored under C colon slash, which means it's in the C drive. And then users, and then basically your username, and then your documents, right, typically. Or if you were looking for your pictures, you'd be looking in your pictures. Now, there's a couple things to understand about the file systems. First, they are hierarchical, meaning mainly you start in the top and you go down into folders as you go down. The second thing to know about file systems is that everything is a file on your computer. Everything. Everything is a file. This is, this is true. This includes folders, by the way. Folders are files that have other files in them. Okay. Uh, this, well, I guess this is very, very true. If you if you look at a Ma if you look at your uh, if you're running a Mac and you open up an application, you can actually like open up into an application and look inside of it, and it's just a folder filled with exit with stuff. Um. Right, but. This top level directory is denoted as the root. Right? And in Windows, that's your C drive. In, in a system like me, like uh, Unix that I'm using, though, 
it's called it's just given the simple name slash for the root for the root now in a so if you want to follow along on a Mac or something you can simply just go that you can open up a terminal and type CD slash and it'll bring you to your root to your root we can actually see what kind of files are inside your root uh, the folders in there rather are by running LS which stands for list if you're running Windows the same the sim, the command to do that is dir as in dir for directory it's just fun to say it as dir because it sounds stupid um, so anyway there's a whole bunch of gibberish right over here right I've got a bin folder a boot folder a dev folder and etc folder right I guess everything else goes there that's true opt all these have different things that are outside of the scope of the class to talk about, but each of these folders is just a different way of being organized. Like various libraries are over here, various shared resources are in user slash share. Um, but it makes it fairly intuitive. What I can do is just do CD for change directory to go into a folder. Um, the folder I'm typically working with is my home folder. So I just said CD home which brought me to the home folder which has one folder in it which is my folder Andrew CD Andrew and so now notice that it doesn't say CD slash home slash Andrew it's in this weird thing which is a tilde which is shorthand for your user home which is where you do most of your work anyway um, by the way right um, now file systems like Unix systems are very protective because uh, if I can get it, I mentioned that everything is a file. Uh, that includes commands. CD bin uh, ls. So this is the command. Notice that over there that I just use ls the command. There's the L, that's the executable to uh, file that runs it. Uh, let's go ahead and delete it. Uh, rm dash. Um, actually, I'm going to go ahead and move it just in case this actually works. Uh, move ls to uh, L, ls dot hack dot lol um, and it says move you cannot move ls to ls dot uh, hack dot lol permission is denied right it's an essential file I can't do that I'd have to be a super user to do that um, and this is the whole thing why basically Windows pops up with that like are you sure you want to run this file thing click yes that's so that you it will you'll go into super user mode so you can run that thing um, I'm not actually going to re uh, remove that command. I think that would be bad for me. Um, so, you know, just in general. But the idea here is that everything is a file, including uh, including the file, including that. As a result, you never want to run this. You never want to run this command. Um, you never want to run this command. Uh, sudo, which stands for super user, um, uh, r r s m dot r f. Um, which means recursively and forcefully remove uh, root. What, so that's root, right? Remember, root is that. And then this is uh, star means everything inside of there. Running that would delete everything on my computer. So let's not do that. Um, never run that command. It's also, it's also a good indication of why you never want to ru run random uh, code off the internet if you don't necessarily understand what it does. Because you know, 4chan is a thing that exists, and um, and they don't, and the people who run, who work, who are on 4chan, don't just stay on 4chan, unfortunately. All right. So um, now, one thing you may notice is that if you're using Windows, uh, I was using forward slashes. Uh, Windows uses backslashes because, yeah, that's why. Uh, just because that's the way it developed. Um, so if you want it to run on both operate, if so, if you want to basically, so you know, I had mine be madlib slash one dot txt, and your Python may have been smart enough to handle that, but you may have needed to do this to get it to work. In uh, if you were on Windows, uh, unfortunately, fortunately, there is a way to handle that, which is um, to use um, the join function over here using the OS library. OS for operating system. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, import OS. So let's go ahead and create something called path. Let's create a new thing called path, which is the path of the file. 
uh, and that will be equal to madlibs dot um, let's see that will be equal to sorry os dot join madlibs and uh, one dot txt and what that join does is that it for everything in a comp that every argument it gets it will put a the appropriate slash between them so here if I do lib file over here and do path instead right I can just print the path to just show you on my computer it will come out as a um, forward slash oh no s as no attribute oh I think it's os.path.join my bad here we go. Oh, it's the path that join. So in my computer, it will show up as madlibs.1, and if it was run a forward slash 1.txt, and if it was running on a Windows computer, it would be a backslash there. So that helps basically deal with any compatibility issues that you might encounter, right? Remember, you're comp if you're writing a program, it can run, and it's going to be reading a file or something, it can run on pretty much any system that has a Python interpreter on it. So, um, right, so if you, so on Windows, os.join and path.join user bin spam would return user bin spam with backslashes, and on OSX or Linux, it would be user slash bin slash spam. So it's very, very helpful. Okay. Um, so the other thing that's pretty useful is, uh, is there's a command in, in, in on your shell oh, if you're using or if you're using um, again if you're using a Unix system called PWD I don't know if this works on Windows because I'm not familiar with the Windows shell uh, PWD which looks like it should be password but it's um, a command that's short for print working directory which means it tells you where you are uh, I'm in slash home I'm at root and inside root I'm at home and inside a uh, home I'm in the Andrew folder Right, and the Andrew folder has a lot of stuff in it. So it says that's where I am. So if I'm, say, working in Python, I might want to know that kind of thing. So like over here, I can print out where I am. Print os dot, let's see what it did say, os dot, and here it's called CWD, Current Working Directory. And that will let you know where I currently am. So I'm in the home folder. I'm in the home folder underneath root, and inside of that the Andrew folder, and inside of that the classroom folder, and inside of that the ITP, the Intro to Python folder. Or I could simply say I'm in the ITP folder inside classroom, inside Andrew, inside home, which is at the root level. So that's useful to know where I am because I want to get stuff. Uh, I want to get I want to know about um, folders. Um, now, in path, as terms of path, there's two ways to specify uh, where we are at. There's the absolute path, where that always begins at the root folder, right? So this is the absolute path that I printed out over here. This is the absolute path. It starts at the root, right? And it says, hey, where you're inside root, you're inside the root folder, inside the Andrew folder, or inside the classroom folder, inside the ITP folder, right? It says from the root on down, this is where you are. So we can start at the root, and you can basically go through. Here are the instructions to to start at the root, open up the appropriate folders till you get till you get to the appropriate location. That's the absolute path. Um, now, why don't we use the absolute path for everything? Because everybody's computer is slightly different, and every update breaks it. Um, basically, uh, you know, just because it works on my computer doesn't necessarily mean it will work on yours. Um, hence, we often use relative path, which is based off of your current working directory. So this is the relative path of the file we're reading. Madlibs, which is inside our current folder, right? So it's, at, so it's assuming since we're not starting at the root folder, right? Notice there's no slash in front of the Madlibs over here. We instead do madlib slash 1.txt. Now, all this holds true for Windows as well. The difference is that if you're working on a Windows system, just replace root 
with C colon slash. And it's the same premise. Okay. So what I'd like to do is re is really I'd like to get all the file names for for the things in my folder. That would be fantastic because we can totally use OS to do a whole lot. We could um, make um, a folder. You know, we could make folders. We can make files, which actually brings us to like our first bit of malware that we could write. Um, let's see. So, boom, boom, boom. finding file sizes and forward contents. Aha! OS.listdir. There we go. So, for instance, if I say, um, so that seems promising. So, if I do, if I print out, so OS.current working directory got my current working directory, but if I go OS.listdir, and print that out instead over here. That's going to print out all the files in my current working directory. Scope.py, drawing.py, all the CSV files, everything that's in this current in my current working directory. Because I didn't give it a path name. However, if I give it the path name of oh say madlibs And I just have to put in Madlibs there. Hopefully, it gives me a, it gives me these two files, two dot text and one dot text. That seems promising, right? So let's go ahead and just say Madlib files are equal to os dot lister Madlibs. So what does this command do? It gives me the contents of this folder, Madlibs over there. It printed out 1.txt and 2.txt. Everybody following so far? Okay. So now that I know what the files are, um, this is useful because now I can choose one at random instead of just locking myself into one Madlib file. So first, let's grab this over here. Let's import random. Right? And now let me show you it on the Python library. Right? We've already, we already learned how to do like get a random number from Python. But how can I grab something from a random selection? Turns out that's pretty easy. Uh, Python 3. Um, let's go ahead and import random. So um, let's go ahead and say and create a list <laughs> called L. And we'll just put populate it with fruit. Apple. Banana. Uh, carrot, not technically fruit, but whatever. Durian, eggplant. Okay, and that should be enough. Okay, so that's all of them. Now, suppose I wanted to get a random one of these out of here. Okay, so there's the annoying way to do it, which is pretty much what you have to do in every other programming language, is figure out, okay, so L is, a fi is five long, which means it has pr uh, valid indices of zero to four, so I have to get a, choose a, a valid index between zero and four, and then plug it into there to get the, uh, to get the output there, which would require like three lines. Python, on the other hand, goes, eh, we've got a function for that. So random.choice. So given a list, you can use random.choice on that list to grab something at random from it. Right? For i in range 100, random.choice l. Right? And it just simply chose. 100 uh, something at uh, random 100 different times from there. So we have a list of all the file names over here. So we can use random that choice to grab a random file. Hmm. Chosen game is equal to. Um, 
random dot choice mad lib files and then we can replace it over here so notice that we've just been slowly teaching you new things making this game incrementally more complex as to what I can do with it or more um, more choices so here what I can do is now I can say hey this time if I run it oh it says choice is not defined random dot choice Oh, chosen game. So now if I go here, enter an adjective. Uh, flurry. Oh, uh, sorry. Um, scarce. Enter a noun. Airplane. Ran. Taco. Taco. So we've got that. And now, let's go enter an adjective, noun, noun, noun. So we've got that again. Okay. It's random again, so A, enter a verb this time. So now we start out with enter a verb. Um, Chuck. Slam. Cry. Romantic, uh, romantic, noun, um, it's a good noun, apple, um, stub, toe, Um, classroom. When you shall be Chuck, uh, that I am so that I am so slam that it is better that I cry that I may live. Thus, when I am thus romantic in the apple, you will do without a moment's delay. Stub a toe through me and cut off my classroom, <laughs> or do whatever else uh, may be wanting to give me rest. So there you. I know gibberish. Not necessarily the greatest source for a Mad Lib. But the idea here is that now we can create random files, and now we can start actually adding onto it. Um, right? A lot of times we want to deal with nouns, but sometimes we want to deal with, deal with plural nouns. So how can I extend this program to deal with plural nouns? Well, I can just add plural noun over here, and let's go ahead and see what happens. Can I do... An adjective panda walk to the uh, plural noun. These plural nouns. A plural noun. Oh, yeah, I can't run that because this is a text file. Silly me. Please enter an adjective. Sad. Moon. Verb jumped enter a noun um sorry the sad panda walked to the moon then jumped a nearby town was unaffected by these carrots okay but now I can also add in that other thing that was mentioning. How do we deal with like past tense verb? Well, I can just simply add in an or over here. Verb past. Um, well, let's see. Verb past. Past. Slash. Past. Tense. There we go. So now let's go ahead and see if this works, though. Um, verb, past, tense. So will it be verb or verb past tense that gets picked up? Let's see, enter a verb. That's the issue with random programs. A, 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 A. 
So it says a panda walked to a, to the A and then A past tense. So it didn't pick up verb past tense. Why not? Why doesn't it pick up verb past tense? Any suggestions? Yes. Sorry? Um, well, I had to escape this. I had to escape the parentheses, otherwise it would do parentheses. It actually has to do with the fact that we've got verb and verb past tense. Does perhaps switching up the order matter? Will that help it be less greedy? Ah, there we go. So the order mattered. It looked for nouns first, then verb, then ver sorry, then adjective, then verb past tense, and then verb. Right? So basically it said, ah, found a verb. Great. Versus, um, I'm going to continue looking to make the biggest match possible. So that's something to keep in mind. So let's go ahead and review this file. Um, we've got, so the first thing we do is we import three libraries, RE for regular expressions, OS for operating system, and random for choosing random numbers. What we do is then we grab all the files that are in our Madlib directory. We grab all the files inside the Madlib directory and, well, we're not actually grabbing the contents of the files, mind you. We're grabbing the names of all the files. That's what this does just grabs their names. Why? Because we want to be able to choose one at random. So we, ran, so we choose one at random using random.choice and we get a random name of a file, which was either 1.txt or 2.txt. Okay? Now that we've chosen that file, we create the appropriate path by doing os.path.join, madlibs, and chosen game. And this will create madlib slash either 1.txt or 2.txt. Now the reason we do it like this is that so we can put in a, either a forward slash or a backslash. And we don't have to worry about am I on Windows or, on I, or am I on Mac. So now that we, we know what file we want, we can go, we can open up the, the file. We can also open up our output, which gets overridden each time, by the way, which is perfectly fine. And then we can then we compile our regular expression, which looks for anything in all caps that we want to replace. Noun, adjective, verb in past tense, verb, adverb, or plural noun. Right? So then we create our output, and we just simply read every line, strip it, ask, hey, do we have, is there anything that matches the regular expression in this line? While that's true, ask them to enter the appropriate thing that we got from, from searching the regular expression. Get that thing. Replace one instance of, replace that thing you just found by search, because search finds the very first thing, and sub will replace the very first thing if you have the one there. If you don't have the one there, it's going to replace everything. And then keep searching to see if there's any more. Right. If this, if there's no more, then what match? Then mad, mad regex dot search will return none, and which will be false, which will be treated by false by the computer. So then we can go output is equal to output plus line, and then we can write that, and then we can write that line to the output file. Then we print out the output, and then we close our out file so that it gets written to line. All told, including the blanks, it is 27 lines long. Not a particularly big program. And again, it was just one that we made incrementally more complex. Right? And remember, and, and I want you to just take that to heart, right? This is one program, it's not got any functions or anything in there. But what I did was basically I 
looked at it and I was like, let me start the prop. Let me just start working on each part of the problem. Let me read the file one at a time. Let me see if I can find a noun verb, if I can use a regular expression there. Okay, I can find the first thing. If I try to replace them all, if I try to use sub, I replace them all. Is there any way I can use sub? So I looked up subs documentation and it says, oh, if you use, a, there's a count variable that's optional. So we can use that. Then I said, well, how do I keep checking? Well, that sounds if I want to keep doing something like a loop. We'll use a while loop. So, no, so just simply built up incrementally. Notice that we kind of just wrote a nested loop, by the way, a while loop inside of a for loop, and nobody kind of just batted their, anybody, and nobody batted their eyes at that. That just kind of happened naturally. Right. So this incremental process is always very, very useful. Right. Um, yes. Sorry? I'm not going to test for the file locations on the exam. File locate. So when it comes to the exam, all I care about is can you open a file and can you write a file? That's all I care about. Can you open a file and can you write a file? So all I care about is essentially opening up with this, li this line for reading, right, and then doing something like this, or for writing, Opening up a file like this and using output.write and sorry outfile.write and outfile.close. That's really all I care about for the exam. Uh, reading is more important, but writing is also pretty important because when you're collecting a lot of experimental data, right? You know that gets a bit of stuff. So um, before we leave out for the day, I did mention this does get into our first bit of malware, right? That we can that we can write. Um, most stupid bugs are pretty stupid and in fact you will end up writing some malware accidentally on yourself eventually at some point. It's embarrassing and you'll do it. So let's go ahead and write the first one together which is fairly simple, right? I can just simply um, and really we define malware as just something that does something bad to your computer. Um, which means we've, and we've learned how to use up one of our computer's resources which is the hard disk space on your computer, right? You use it up by writing a file. So our first bit of malware is actually pretty, bit, uh, pretty simple to write, which is, um, and again, uh, oh, and I should mention that doing this on somebody else's computer without, the, without their permission is a felony. Like, go directly to jail uh, felony, you know. So just FYI, uh, you need to be very aware that basically as a computer scientist, you are not a, um, there are, it, you need to have very strong understandings of what's allowed. And the big thing that is not allowed, broadly what it comes down to is um, the two thing is um, for basically the big thing for criminal law when it comes to programming and the big thing for, le for civil law when it comes to programming. With criminal stuff, pretty much everything illegal on a computer comes down to un accessing somebody else's computer without their permission. So, e.g., you have somebody, you grab somebody password, and so now you can access their account, unauthorized access there. Um, or you've just hacked into somebody's computer, unauthorized access. Broadly, I mean, this is an oversimplification, but broadly, if it's criminal if it involves accessing somebody else's computer without their permission, right? Uh, civilly, it's basic. Uh, that ends up being. Uh, the GPL is sacred. Do not violate it. Uh, do not, in other words, do not copy code on the internet, which is copyright free, because that might make your project, your corporate project, now copyright free. And now your company has to release that source code, which is proprietary. Oops. Uh, this has happened a couple times with with uh, specifically like with Linksys routers and stuff. So anyway, with that. Uh, don't worry. When you get onboarded, the lawyer should give if for a large company. The lawyer should give you a nice big, uh, at least scarathon for an hour or so. Um, what about Linksys routers? I think they violated the GPL at some point. They they grabbed something from a GNU project, which was, and they were using the full GNU license. The GPL. Uh, the GNU public license, which, yeah, I know. Um, GPL is GPL. It's um, it's one of those licenses that basically says anybody can use this code, but if you use it, then your code also has to be open source. 
and following the same uh, license, as which is different than the LGPL. Um, anyway, let's go ahead and just call this. Um, so let's be very very clear on um uh, with our file name on this one, and I do say. Um, Okay, so let's see, see here. Um, ITP. Let's call it. Uh, let's call this do not run dot pi. Okay. And basically, what we're going to do is that we've learned to, uh, to write to a file. So if I write enough uh, stuff to a file, it'll run out. You'll you'll run out of disk space. Okay, so um, we do hit some limitations, though. So, but let's go ahead and just see the ba the way the basics of how this works. Uh, import random. Okay, uh, for i is for i in range. Actually, I don't need any i there. So, for blank in range, let's go with ten thousand. This is not going to really do too much damage at all to my own computer, right? Uh, open. Uh, so let's create an out file. Out file is equal to open uh, fuzz.txt. Oh, let's go ahead and create a folder, by the way, to put to put all all. I'll put create a folder later to put all my trash in fuzz.txt. Um, Open with write access. Now, mind you, what I'm writing here isn't particularly smart either. Like, it's not going to. So, anyway, uh, out file dot write. And I don't even have to bother using a new line. Um, random dot rand int. Do I even need a? Do I need an argument? Probably, but I don't care. Um, and then out file dot close. Okay. Uh, Randint requires two uh, positions. Give it a bunch of zeros. Argument must be string. Right must be a string, not an int. Right. Oh, I have to put an str around this sucker. So generate some random number. It generated a bunch of numbers. Now if I open this up in fuzz.txt. Right, and this is perfectly fine because I'm doing it on my computer. And notice it's just got, uh, I just printed out a whole bunch of numbers there. Um, so more specifically, notice that it is how many, uh, how big is it? Not that big. It's uh, 670 bytes. So not much was used up there. But if I do this and say, hey, um, if I then say basically do not run this and I run this a lot of times, right, I can end up using a lot more space. Um, however, of course, it just takes longer and longer uh, reload. And I can't really check on my progress now because um, it's getting bigger for the bigger than the file wants to deal with. So let's go ahead and exit, check. Um, yeah, I've got to force quit it. Yeah. Um, Ella, so let's go ahead and check it out on um, classroom.txt. Oh yeah, and it's totally possible if you're running this, and you can run out of memory that you could run out of memory or something like that. So just you know, I did name it "Do Not Run." Uh, classroom slash. As far as malware goes, this is pretty easy because the way you remedy this problem is by deleting the file. <laughs> Right, but but essentially, right, cd dot um, itp. Let's go ahead and kill this and see how many num uh, how big that file was. ls. Uh, so it was fuzz.txt, So ls dash shall. Um, let's see. Did it out end end up outputting anything? I. 281 kilobyte, uh, 281 kilobytes, and so not particularly a lot right now, right? Um, right. So if we open up and so if we open up Guinea again, 
Okay, if I open up that file, fuzz. Oh, sorry, no. I was reading the wrong one. 174 megabytes at this point. So it's just eating up a lot of stuff. It's at the point where I just can't open it, right? Um, mind you, um, this isn't particularly fancy. First off, it's slow as far as trashing somebody's computers go, right? Uh, oh, and by the way, you should not run. I need to re completely reemphasize this so I don't get in trouble. Uh, don't run any malware on your comp on anybody else's computers, right? Don't run it, come come uh, run, run, come and complain to me if you run this and you end up eating up all your hard disk space, right? Um, but basically, it's I'm just trying to show that basically, a lot of people think of hacking and malware as very very like hard things to do and super advanced and actually it's just like some really basic stuff uh, and, and some or sometimes just a benign thing uh, done like that um, one thing that and like I said um, this kind of thing you know it's fairly benign in the sense that right um, if I had a file right um, you know, sorry, if I've got this file over here, what was it called? Do not run, right? I've got this over here and it's creating this file over here, which is just, it's one file taking up a lot of space, right? So the user just finds the file and deletes it, right? They can see it. Oh, this file is taking up a huge amount of space. So it's not particularly smart. So last thing we'll do is make sure that the user can't see it. Um, which all I have to do, I think, is just simply put, which in, which by the way, in in a Unix system, is just simply add a dot in front of it. And now I will run this. I'll run this ten thousand times again just to make my point across. So boom, I ran the file, and um, I just used up a bunch of disk space. Classroom, not much disk space. Um, and now that adding that dot may made it a hidden folder or it made it a hidden file which now only appears if I go ahead and uh, you know click the show hidden files um, there dot fuzz dot txt right oh and uh, you know part of the reason it was taking so long by the way is that if I was um, you know creating a bunch of files there so um, so I'll just create a folder called fuzz. Um, actually, I want to make it a hidden folder, right? So same thing over here, dot fuzz. Okay. And what we'll do is actually what we'll what we'll do is um, is part of the issue is that basically my, my computer froze and basically looked like it wasn't doing anything. So what we'll do is that rather than writing one file. Uh, we'll write lots and lots and lots of files instead uh, because that makes everything just messier. So what we'll do is that we'll open um, fuzz, dot fuzz slash because I created a fuzz folder and if you don't have one you'll just have to use the OS command to open one which is just another line of code. Uh, dot fuzz slash fuzz plus rand int str random dot randint zero to yeah we're gonna grab big number over here to make sure that we don't get any repeats because that's totally gonna work but um, plus dot txt um, and now Let's go ahead and write, and let's go ahead and indent this, and write for blank in range again. So here we'll open up ten thousand files, and they'll each write ten thousand digits. Um, I have these things coming gigabytes of data these days. Oh, out file dot write. What 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 what? What don't you like? Out file invalid syntax. Oh, colon. What do you 
an invalid syntax. Um, did I forget? Parenthesis over here. Unsupported operand type for plus int and string. Oh, 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 oh. I see now. I see my mistake. Oh, oh yeah. Um, oh, it says I closed a file. So, oh, right, right, right. So this close needs to be out of here. Because I open that file, then I write the stuff, then I close it. And now it's going, and now let's see what, the, what I'm doing to my computer. Uh, so if we go into the .fuzz folder, you will see that there's just all these files that are just popping up here. Um, I'll go ahead and kill that, right, because it would create a 10,000 10, of these things. And, right, I've already generated 27 megabytes worth of data there. So, right, programs like that are not really particularly hard to uh, write that just do some boring stuff. I'm oh, sorry, that do something, I mean, but... So congratulations, you now how to at least know how to pwn yourself, I guess. Um, all right, that's all I got for today. So um, the end, re end result with great power comes with great responsibility. Don't misuse your powers for evil. Is this stuff relevant to the file? Just curious. No. Uh, I, mean, so I mean relevant to the, the exam? No. Or, or to anything? But I, 